friends, best greetings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov, and this is my channel about entomology, about insects. So I am a researcher, I am entomologist, beekeeper, and teacher, and this is channel about insects, invertebrates, nature, English, and about Kyiv, Ukraine as well, and about Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. So I am now in Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, and you watch my channel just with different insects. If you like it, if you don't like it, just go out, just switch off and go out. If you want to communicate with me, you can use this Skype messenger, or you can send me some, some private messages through email, you can say gmail.com. If you want to write comments, also you need to be registered on Gmail so you can write your comments under the description of this video or you can write your comments in the comment section just now or on the right side of the screen for private message sent here today i'm going to show you some interesting insects which i have recorded before and actually last summer and maybe not last summer for this hard summer actually summer of war or summer of peace one summer before and let's start from the beginning. I have many different videos. I'm very pleased to show you these insects and discuss what's interesting inside. As you can be surprised because many insects are very, very surprised. It's a huge, very huge. which are called hawk moths or also called sphinx moths or hummingbird moths any of a group of sleek looking moths from the family sphingidae were named like that because of the hathering swift flight patterns but we have also a very interesting tongue which is inserted inside this special like a tube and larva caterpillar has a very special structure, usually with horn on the body, on the back of a body. And you see here, this piece is very special because it has a tongue. Which is very, very strange, very, very interesting. The quite feeding part. Of my so these are family, these are beautiful belonging to the family Sphingidae, Sphinx moth, Hawks moth, or Hummingbird moth. Let's show next insects. Who are these? You know, a lot of different beetles who are predators, so many beetles of Carabidae family are predators, but if you observe them in captivity, so you can recognize. What they're doing? They're feeding on something. Yes, and this kind of a carabid beetle or round beetle is just cutting the leaf. So why? Just he need a little bit moisture, or this is his food. So some carabid beetles are feeding on plants as well. That's quite easy to understand by absorbing them, so we can eat some seeds some plants and can make even some damage for agricultural crops. So he's trying to use his mandibles, mandibles on the mouth parts just to cut, cut with the leaf. The two different individuals, one with bigger mandibles, another with smaller, and so two different species. And for another species, I proposed some another food I propose some aphids, sucking aphids on from another plant. And another carabid beetle were very lucky to find this predaceous species. So a predaceous species was eating aphids. Just let's see how another species will be very happy to eat 
small. Yes. Sitting here carefully and chewing with mandibles, chewing with mandibles, moving with mandibles and feeding on this, this tiny small black or gray drops. These are tiny, tiny aphids sucking insects. So, so, so this round beetle is very happy to catch them one by one, like seeds. Yeah, like sunflower seeds for humans. Very, very tasty, very tasty. And this one also is sitting and eating another aphids as well. Very easy for using aphids for, for feeding either beetles or feeding ants. So sometimes you can collect, if you keep culture of ants, so you can collect some plants outside near your house in a spring and summertime with aphids. Aphids were sitting, they are not crawling, they are not running very quickly. So they can fly sometimes, but they are moving very slowly. So you see here some aphids like drops were sitting and all these two round beetles are very happy for feeding and even they're just trying to fight for food. So one is just beetle is fighting with another one to get more food. And I show you some ants also from my culture. You are keeping some ants in formicarium. This is very good idea for observations. So you can see how ants feeding each other, how ants eat feeding on seeds or maybe just on some drops of honey liquid, how they move, how they feed in other ants. So and see here they're exchanging with food. This process is called trophallaxis, trophallaxis, trophallaxis. We're just moving with antenna, both of individuals, both specimens feeding. And just one individual who was lucky to receive some food, exchanging with his food, his liquid, with another individual, with another specimen. So this is and on the right side was feeding for one, one individual and now he's feeding another one with same species Camponotus. Camponotus and I kept them in captivity One my friend gave me small culture for cultivation and for some observations and for recording this video or similar videos. So you can also record your videos on your camera, either a video camera or even on your camera on your smartphone, your telephone. Because the insects are in me, so they have no space to escape. So they're like in an aquarium, but in formicarium. So you can observe them how they feeding each other. Because one and on the right side was lucky to have some food and left one was not so lucky, but was lucky to receive exchange of by food with this ant, which is using like a nurse feeding another insects, another ants in a colony, an ants colony. So let's start to make your videos using smartphone and exchange. Or if you want to show your videos, you can send this video to me and I will show for another people. And here are some insects sitting in a cage. They are not escaping because they're crawling very slowly. And these are super mealworm, Zophobus rattus, Zophobus mealworm, same size, maybe two centimeters size. And one is B1 rhino beetle or rhinoceros beetle, male with big horn which is trying to escape and moving a little bit and trying to use his horn to get through. And the uh, rhinoceros beetle is very powerful uh, with his first pair of legs, with his horn. And I had the experience that I kept this, uh, this uh, rhino beetle in a plastic box, well, a very simple plastic box from, which I used uh, from Milky Cream, but 
just emerged, just very fresh. Reno Beetle used his very, very strong first pair of legs and made a big hole in a plastic jar and escaped. And escaped. I was lucky to find escaped Reno Beetle just in my kitchen. So be careful putting them in a plastic box with thin walls. Rina beetle even through the plastic. But these super mealworms like beetles on the right side were not so powerful. We're usually not penetrating plastic box. We're not chewing, but I'm careful. They can escape easily on the walls. Carefully, carefully, but we can be adapted and can escape through the walls and can be crawling in your room in your laboratory if you are not careful they like to escape they sometimes they're becoming hungry and when they're hungry they're becoming more active and trying to escape as soon as possible and some other insects which are quite easy to be kept in captivity you can keep these are not grasshoppers these are brain mantises brain mantises two females I collected them in August time. We are coming to the city, so I didn't catch them in a forest. But you were coming to the city to the light of shop shopping center. And here, two of them. We one is trying to escape, and one another trying to be aggressive, and showing that, that she is more powerful, opening wings, and just showing uh, that she is big aggressor and bigger size on a smaller brain mantis and small brain mantis just escaped but if you keep two individuals in one cage just be very careful mantis are predators predators and one and another they can be fighting and only one will survive in captivity so better to use just some food for feeding them like mealworms Larry, and you can feed them easily. What about next insect? And next insects are coming to your kitchen very often. These insects you can find in your kitchen because these are dangerous pests. These are beetles, tiny beetles, weevils, tiny beetles you can see crawling. But running, running very fast. This are Plodia interpunctella, southern mealworm moth, size about six millimeters. Sometimes can fly in a kitchen. Just housekeepers are very worried about them. You can find them in a kitchen and saying, this this tiny moth will in all my clothes. No, no, no. These tiny moths and the larvae caterpillars will not eat food, but only some food like plants, like some seeds, some cereals, some dry dry plants material, like here, some grains. And here in a bigger size, in a bigger magnification, just this is Plodia interpunctella sitting just under the sunshine. You see brown coloration of wings, stripe on wings, very sharp like a nose. You see coloration is just very special for wings. And, and another moths, which are fur moths, very tiny, they're just different, have a different coloration, just yellowish coloration, and flying usually in a, not in a kitchen. In a kitchen, usually the commonest pest, this is moth, Plodia interpunctella, or rain moth, which, are, which is laying eggs about 
60, 100 eggs can lay this moth. And tiny caterpillars will penetrate boxes. Some packages can make cavities in packages. And larvae are very small, so they can easily penetrate any box with food material like dry food, dry raisins, bread, cereals. And so next time you can open not very well sealed package, you can find inside caterpillars. And caterpillars are very irritating because they can eat and make a mesh, silk mesh, mesh inside your food. So it can destroy some food very easily, especially if it will be high infestation with this very tiny moth. But infestation can be pretty high. You see just one female, one of these tiny moth will lay 60 or 100 eggs very easily. So infestation, so only even 60 caterpillars can hatch from one moth and it's quite a big number. Finally, I show you beloved insects, which I showed already before. And this is prosperin mantis, which very common for observations. Many people are keeping them just in the zoo, the home zoo. But you will not keep mantis during the winter, because usually in Europe mantises were just over winter in the egg case is the late base and a very young small larvae of babies of mantises will hatch just somewhere in the springtime. But there are many tropical species of mantises, so that's why 